Time to Assert American Values, from the New York Times. Singapore's founding leader, Lee Kuan Yew, returned to a favorite theme yesterday in defending the threatened caning of Michael Fay, an 18-year-old American found guilty of vandalism. Western countries value the individual above society. In Asia, he said, the good of society is deemed more important than individual liberties. This comfortable bit of sophistry helps governments from China to Indonesia rationalize abuses and marginalize courageous people who campaign for causes like due process and freedom from torture. Western nations, it is asserted, have no right to impose their values on countries that govern themselves successfully according to their own values. So the argument goes, when Americans express outrage over a punishment that causes permanent scarring, in this case caning, they are committing an act of cultural arrogance, assuming that American values are intrinsically superior to those of another culture. There is a clear problem with this argument. It assumes that dissidents, Democrats, and reformers in these countries are somehow less authentic representatives of their cultures than the members of the political elite who enforce oppressive punishments and suppress individual rights. At times like this, Americans need to remember that this country was also founded by dissidents, by people who were misfits in their own society because they believed, among other things, that it was wrong to punish pilferage with hanging or crimes of any sort with torture. These are values worth asserting around the world. Americans concerned with the propagation of traditional values at home should be equally energetic in asserting constitutional principles in the international contest of ideas. There are millions of acts of brutality that cannot be exposed and combated. A case like Michael Fay's is important because it provides a chance to challenge an inhumane practice that ought not to exist anywhere. While this country cannot dictate to the government of Singapore, no one should fail to exhort it to behave mercifully. President Clinton provided a sound example when he called for a pardon. Principled private citizens ought now to call for American companies doing business in Singapore to bring their influence to bear. Our colleague, William Sapphire, is right to call upon American corporations with subsidiaries in Singapore to press President Ong Tang Chung to cancel Mr. Fay's punishment. According to Dunn and Bradstreet and the U.S. Asian Business Council, some CEOs and companies in this category are Riley P. Betchel of the Betchel Group Incorporated, John S. Reed of Citicor, Roberto C. Guazuda of the Coca-Cola Company Incorporated, Edgar S. Woolard Jr. of EI DuPont, Dina Moores and Company, Lee R. Raymond of Exxon Corporation, John F. Welch Jr. of the General Electric Company, Michael R. Bonsoir of Honeywell Incorporated, Louis V. Gertzner Jr. of the International Business Machines Corporation, and Ralph S. Larson of Johnson & Johnson Incorporated. Singapore needs such people as friends. Now is the time for them to make their voices heard. The Fay case provides a legitimate opening for American citizens and companies to bring political and economic pressure to bear in the propagation of freedom and basic rights. Former President Bush can lead the effort by using his speech at a Citibank seminar in Singapore Thursday to call for clemency for Michael Fay.